Welcome to the Let Good Things In Show. I'm your host, Amanda Acker. I am so happy you're here. At the Let Good Things In Show, we talk all about second chances, resiliency, following your intuition, and even music. Listen to hear stories of hope and to be inspired. Remember, you are stronger than you think. Let's dive in. Hi, my amazing humans. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, Before we get started on today's episode, I just wanted to tell you all how grateful I am for you tuning in every week and listening to my story and also the amazing interviews that I've been releasing with other amazing people out in the world sharing their story. I'm so grateful and from the bottom of my heart, I just wanted to say thank you so much. And if you haven't followed or subscribed, make sure to do that today so you don't miss an episode of the show. So um, on the past few episodes of my story, I have been telling you, you know, in-depth details of certain parts of my journey and how I was able to overcome my parents' divorce Uh, adoption, and also how I was able to overcome failing out of college. Today's episode is going to be slightly different as I'm not going in sequential order with this. I just want to tell you some of my experiences through abusive relationships and how I was able to overcome and what I learned about myself and others through those experiences. So I want to start this off with a story that I experienced um, within an abusive relationship that I was in when I was quite young. Um, So if you haven't listened to the previous episodes, and if even if you have, just to refresh, you know, I was on this journey in my young adult life to find love and acceptance somewhere outside of myself. I wanted my knight in shining armor, so to speak, and somebody who was going to lift me up and somehow dissolve all of my problems. And looking back, I know, like, to me, it sounds crazy. Like, how could a person or a place or a thing or something erase the things that I've been through? So, you know, in this experience, And in getting into these toxic relationships, I still, I didn't understand why every time I thought somebody loved me that I was in pain. One of my very first experiences with abuse was with this person who I truly thought loved me. And I thought he was going to, you know, hold my hand through my pain and really help me to to see my worth as a human. And unfortunately, you know, looking back, I can tell that he took advantage of the situation. You know, I had just given up my daughter for adoption. I was extremely weak and I was just looking for that person. And he happened to be the person that I found. And like most abusive relationships, it didn't start off bad. I felt connected. I felt like I had my partner, someone who truly cared, and I had someone to talk to about my problems. Unfortunately, it didn't stay that way. And I can remember this moment as if it was yesterday. My son was an infant, around six months old. And the way I was living was we had uh, our own place, but we didn't have our own car. So I would have to wake up super early in the morning to take um, his dad to work. And, you know, I hated doing that. I can remember being like, man, like, why can't you get up and get your dad? Or why can't we just figure out how to get ourselves places and not need his vehicle? And I didn't understand why it was always a struggle. And I got this house um, through a government program, and it was beautiful. I mean, it had everything I wanted. It had brand new carpet, and the walls were perfectly painted, and the kitchen was big enough to cook dinners for my friends and my family, and I wasn't ashamed of where I was living. I was, I wanted, I invited my dad over, and we had beautiful furniture and a huge TV, and I was able to get my first computer, and it was just beautiful. And I was excited. And I thought he was too. But that wasn't the case. And I was being forced to wake up extremely early after being up all night with my son, making sure his needs were met, 
I wasn't showering. Um, I had head lice for over a year because I had no one to help me get rid of it. I had been convinced to bleach my hair, which didn't work. I can remember brushing my hair. And you know how you clean out your brush? And I would pull the hair out of my brush and there would just be lice all in my hair. I was itchy all the time, embarrassed, ashamed, just humiliated because bugs, it was so bad that bugs would just like fall out of my hair as I was at the store. At Walmart, I remember scratching my head and it was just happening and it was disgusting, but I wasn't allowed to seek outward help from this relationship because if I did, I was doing something wrong or so that's what I was taught, so to speak, or brainwashed to believe that if I sought outside help that I was somehow I didn't love him or I wasn't showing him, you know, enough affection and he had all the answers and I wasn't allowed to look outward. I didn't have family anymore. I was completely alienated from everything and everyone that I ever knew or trusted in my life. But this moment that I brought up before was when I went to take his dad to work or something. I can't remember if I was taking his dad to work, but all I remember is that I was at our old place, which was where we lived with his dad. And my son was with me in the carrier. And all of a sudden he was, he was in the living room and I had been uh, on Facebook. I think it was, might've been MySpace. This was a long time ago, guys. Um, but I had made a friend a guy friend, but there was no, like, we weren't talking about getting together. I wasn't cheating. I was just talking to someone. And so I remember, like, anytime I was there by myself, I would get on and, like, email him back. And I was telling him about what I was going through. And that's honestly what was helping me be able to survive this relationship because I knew I had someone I could vent to and talk to who would respond and and show me, you know, and tell me that, I was brave that I could get out of this. Well, somehow the guy I was with found these messages and instantly thought that I had already met this person, that we were already having sex, that all of these things were happening that just weren't. They weren't happening. And I can remember him taking my son in the carrier and putting him into the other room. He pulls open our kitchen drawer and pulls a butcher knife out and holds it to my throat. And tells me that if I ever fucking talk to this person again, that he's going to kill me. He told me that he was going to send people after me because I was talking bad about someone in the messages that was also hurting me. That he was going to send that person after me to beat me up. He told me that he was going to hurt my face in a way that I I would never be able to find anyone else to love me because he was going to destroy my face. And I remember the sheer fear that I felt, that overwhelming fight or flight kicked in. Because not only did I need to figure out how to get myself out of this, but I had to protect my son. So one day I take him to work. I dropped him off. And at the time, a friend was staying with us. And I remember calling my mom and telling her, please come get me. I'm no longer safe. And I grabbed my son. My mom came like a banshee (laughs) to my rescue, took me to a, a domestic violence shelter with my son. And, you know, in that moment, I had this knowing almost of, oh, my gosh, I left him. I'm brave, but I'm also so, so scared. I'm so afraid that he'll find us. He's going to find me and it's going to happen. And I had to go through all the court proceedings of getting a protection from abuse order. And I had to do all these things that were very scary and hard for me. But I did them because I listened to my gut and I knew I couldn't go back. I knew I couldn't raise my son in that situation. And staying in the shelter was a much better option. And even though I had experienced such abuse, and even though I had resources in front of me to keep me safe and to protect me from further being abused, I still didn't see myself as worthy of love. It was even worse now 
I had constant thoughts of, I need someone to help protect me. I need someone to take care of me and my son. I need help. I need this. I need that. But instead of looking inside of myself and reaching out my hand to get help from the women who were around me, who were there to help me, that was their job, was to help women struggling in abusive relationships. And I I turn my back on it. No, I didn't go back to to my son's father, but I did run to the arms of another man. A man that I knew deep down I wasn't in love with. Someone I had been with previously that didn't work out. (laughs) And I went back because I thought that's what I had to do. I didn't realize at the time that I could survive on my own. I could do it, but I was so brainwashed to believe through these experiences and through that abusive relationship that I couldn't, and I believed it. So I go on with my life, and I keep getting into these abusive relationships, and not all of them were physical. Most of them were just verbal abuse, mental, emotional abuse. I was told at one point that if I didn't go and be a stripper, that I was doing something wrong, even though I knew that being a stripper was not something that I wanted to do with my life. I did it out of fear that I was going to disappoint someone who I thought loved me. But guess what? That isn't love. Love isn't supposed to hurt. Love is supposed to warm your soul. And when you wake up in the morning, Look at the person next to you and feel safe. See, I never felt safe in any relationship back then. Not until my husband, to be perfectly honest. It was always a struggle. It was always that constant, I need to appease this person. I need to make them see how much I love them. And if they're mad at me, I must have done something wrong. It was never, you know, he did something wrong, or he's treating me wrong, or this isn't how love's supposed to feel. I need to leave. It was, what's Amanda doing wrong? Why, why is he hurting me? Like, I didn't mean to upset him. It took a lot out of me. And for those of you listening who have been through abuse or are still living in abuse, it's taking so much away from you. And abuse comes in many forms. You don't have to have bruises, scratches, bleed, or anything like that to be in an abusive relationship. Most of the abusive relationships I've been with were with men who never laid their hands on me. I want you to know that if you are feeling unsafe and if you are experiencing somebody in your life, it doesn't even have to be a significant other. It can be a friendship. It can be someone in your family. They're hurting you and they're making you feel that you're not good enough. That is abuse. Constantly being told that you're fat, that you're not good enough, that you will never be anything. Being made fun of publicly, being made to feel that you're some sort of joke and that everything that you come up with is weird or not good enough or never going to become anything or somebody you go to and tell them that you want to go back to school to better yourself and they make it all about them and say, well, then I won't be able to spend time with you. Or if you do that, you're going to make me feel less than because I don't have that. That is not okay. I was in a relationship where everything I did and said was wrong. I spent most of my days trying to figure out how to hide the fact that we couldn't afford our bills on my own in fear that if I brought it up to this person that they would yell at me about it because it was all my fault. Relationships are not supposed to be painful. And yes, we all fight. I fight with my husband. It's normal to fight. But it is not normal to constantly be walking on eggshells. 
and to feel isolated and like you can't reach out for help from someone outside of that relationship. I want you to know that you are an amazing human and nobody is allowed to make you feel otherwise. You are in control. What I've learned through these toxic, abusive relationships that I've been in is that I need to stop looking outward for love and acceptance because most, not all, most people who find you while you're looking outward do not have your best interests in heart. And you have to be able to be strong enough and love and accept yourself enough to recognize it. I needed to learn that lesson too. And it wasn't an easy lesson to learn. And there's parts of me that wish that I would have learned it sooner. But that was my journey. I had to go through all the abuse, physical, mental, emotional, sexual. I had to go through it all to learn that lesson. And I don't wish any of that on any of you that are listening. I want you to right now take a moment and think about you. What do you want out of life? What are your values? What are you not willing to allow into your life? Create those boundaries. Write them down. Say them out loud. Make them you. Love yourself. Accept yourself and forgive yourself. Because we all make mistakes and a lot of us end up in toxic relationships. And it's not our fault. We need to forgive ourselves and learn from those mistakes and learn how to create the boundaries that are needed to keep us safe so we don't keep repeating like I did over and over and over again, the same relationship with different people. Now I have boundaries. I know my values. I know who I am. If I were to stand alone, something happened to my husband and I needed to be myself by myself, I know I can now because I learned to love and accept and forgive myself. I will never again look outward for that because I have it within me and so do you. You have strength and don't let anyone take that from you. My affirmations for this episode for all of you and myself are, number one, I am strong enough to leave behind the people and things that no longer serve me. I'm going to say it again. I am strong enough to leave the people and things that no longer serve me. I am capable of loving and accepting and forgiving myself. I do not need outside validation for who I am. If you are suffering and you are in a relationship where you are not safe, please call your local domestic violence hotline. I know here in Pittsburgh we have wonderful resources for women and children and men who are experiencing domestic violence. Please seek help because you are worth it and you deserve a life where you are smiling more than you are crying. You deserve to wake up in the morning and feel gratitude for your life and not fear. You are strong enough. And as I mentioned throughout the episode, to write things down and to really reflect and figure out who you are as a person, that is such an important exercise. And soon, in the next month or so, I'm going to be releasing a free online journal with affirmations and prompts and things that you can use to help you get to figuring out who you are inside so you can learn to love and accept yourself. 
Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you haven't yet, make sure to hit that subscribe or follow button. And remember, you are stronger than you think. And no matter what you have been through, you can have the life you imagine. Thank you again, and I will talk to you all soon. Thank you.